if you could hear me, uh, go ahead and type yes in the chat or say hello, say something. Hi, Berba. Hey, what's up, Paul? How are you? I think that was Paul, right? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, enjoying. Berba. Some... Oh, was that Brandon? No, it's Daniel. Daniel. Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's been a while since I've been on Zoom. And by a while, I mean two days ago. But yeah, how's everyone doing? Someone uh, just to speak up, unmute yourself, to say who you are and how's life going. I won't have you guys turn on your uh, cameras. You don't need to, unless you want to. It would be nice to see your faces. But uh, yeah, unmute yourself. Tell me how your summer's going. Crickets. Summer is great. Yeah, what have you been doing, Brandon? Uh, studying and college apps. Okay, cool. Cool, good, getting ahead of the game. Uh, Danny, how's everything going? Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's okay, kind of kind of stressful. Like, kind of, yeah, stressful. I think that's a good word, stressful, just for college apps. Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, like, this whole quarantine, corona, yeah. it's, like, really getting in the way of, like, college apps. And then, like, also, like, you know, volunteering and, like, other things to put on your college apps. So it's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of stressful overall. Yeah. I feel you, you know, um, just, just definitely an adjustment, right? But, uh, hey, the good thing is, I mean, you guys are doing everything you need to do. You're getting your college apps done now. Hey, we're getting our IAs, our EEs done, where it will make things a lot easier uh, by the time we do get back to school. Uh, let's go, uh, Carolyn. How's everything going? Um, it's going pretty well, I think. Um, yeah, I don't. I've been doing like college apps and stuff like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, because of COVID, I haven't been able to like do certain things. Like I had plans for the summer and I feel like really sad that I didn't, didn't get to do them. But like I value the like time I have with my family. And like, it's like not super bad. I can still call people. It's like no big deal. Yeah. I think we got to be a little bit positive about it, right? Um, I mean, there are some good things, bad things. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I think this summer we're, we, we should have been in Chicago right about now. Um, but, hey, we're, we're in California, and I love California. So um, I've been doing the exact same thing as probably when I last talked to you guys. I literally go hiking in the morning, come back, yell at my dogs for a little, come back, do some work. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, Kaylin, we'll, we'll go with Kaylin, and we'll start uh, – with our session. How's everything going, Kaylin? It's going well. We have um, two summer courses and in, in addition to all of the high school summer homework and it's a busy summer. It's productive though. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. So it's, it's definitely a busy summer. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear though you're all healthy uh, and we have most of you guys here. So we have, as you know, we still have a few that are not here. Um, so if you guys see someone that's not here and they should be here, go ahead, send them a text, um, because we do have a lot of very important information to go over. And um, the good thing is, here's what I recommend. I know everyone's super busy uh, with college applications. If you requested a letter recommendation, uh, I'm working on those for you. I'll have them hopefully within the first month of school. If you need it, like automatically, like urgent, you know, I had a student email me a few days ago. They're like, hey, Burba, you know, there's a scholarship I really want to apply for, and it's due Sunday. You know, can you uh, just put mine at the priority list? Understandable. I'll get it done, you know. Uh, that's one good thing about COVID is I'm stuck at home, right? Like, I, I, I'll make things happen for you. So I'll have those letters of recommendation. If you just forgot to even fill out that Google form uh, for a letter of recommendation request, it's, it's still open, right? So I could, you could still fill that out. If you can't find it, email me. Right, I'll uh, I'll get that for you because I know how stressful it could be um, with uh, college letter recommendation stuff. Uh, AP exam. So you guys got your results for the AP exam. Uh, overall, very happy with the cohort. We had um, within your cohort, we had I believe seven kids, seven students with a five, which is excellent. Looking at the uh, uh, conditions of uh, being in the pandemic, uh, that was way above the national average. Uh, your cohort, I think we had about it close to. We were a little bit over 80% pass rate. If um, you scored below a three, what I am going to do with your score automatically is I'm taking your test and I'm filing an appeal for it, right? Uh, I'm going to look at it. Actually, actually, first I'll look at it. I'm going to rescore it, and I'll tell them why I think it might be over a three. 
or, or three or above. So if you did not get that passing score, uh, I am filing that appeal for you. All right. Uh, just because it's a pandemic and I actually graded essays for AP for college board. I had the manifest destiny question and um, literally there, there was a lot of discrepancy between graders. So for example, um, I mean, actually I was, I was right on. I was surprised that I was right on. Like I had, I think an A rating, like a five-star rating, but there were times where me and another grader, we disagree and then they'd have to go to another grader. So uh, just to give you the benefit of the doubt, um, I could, uh, just to help you guys, I'm going to go file those appeals if you didn't score above a, um, above uh, two. Um, another thing is, I, if you scored, I believe there is also an appeal process for if you did get a three, but you were looking at a four or five. Um, if that's the case and you want me to look into yours, if you're like just shocked, like how the heck did I get a three? And I thought I was going to get a four or five. Shoot me an email after this. I'll actually go back, look at your prompt, um, and I'll email you back because another teacher was telling me that that's something that you would need to do on your end. I can't do it on my end. Um, but if you are, if you're like, if you're in complete shock, email me. I'll look it over. And we'll look at the procedure together. All right. Um, any questions at all about the AP exam? If there are no questions, type no or just unmute yourself and say no. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So there's 15 of us. That means there's six, there's six people that are missing. Um, so like I said, if you know who they are, shoot them a message uh, because then I'm going to have to go do this again with them later on. Um, so here's our goal for today, guys. I'm, I want to try to make this as efficient and as quick as possible. And the reason for that is, is because it's summer. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that we understand the requirements for part A of the, uh, of the internal assessment. We need to make sure that we understand the skills that are involved for part A, because uh, for what you're doing for this IA, for part A, you're also gonna be doing for one of your external assessments um, when we take those you know, assessments in May, right? Um, now, because of the whole pandemic situation, if for some reason, uh, let's say we just stay online and IB decides to do remote testing, this IA is going to be more, more than likely a bigger chunk than it normally would. Usually it's about 25% of your total IB score, but it might be. I mean, for the graduating class last year, it was 100%. Whether or not they got the diploma, whether they scored five, six, or seven was dependent on this. So with that in mind, we got to make sure that this is a perfect product. And I'm going to make sure that I do any, everything, you know, to help you score the highest score possible on this. Even if it means me and you meeting before, after school, on a Saturday, Sunday, through Zoom, I want to make sure that you get the best product in because this is the one thing that you control, all right? Um, before I get started, does anyone have any questions about the internal assessment or the work that you've turned in? Make sure to ask because um, it's going to make the rest of the senior year a lot easier for you if we can knock this out with... Uh, a lot of a clarity. Any questions at all? Um, Paul, any questions? No? Okay. Uh, Jay Lee, any questions? No, I don't have any. Excellent. Very good. Uh, Joseph, any questions? All right. So here's uh, the first question, just to get, kind of get it started, is how do you select your historical sources? How do you do that? How do you know what to pick? Uh, let's go with uh, Wei Quan. How do you select your historical sources? Yep, you can just unmute yourself, Wei Quan. Okay. Um, personally, when I do it, I try to just like find some like um, diversity of sources. Like, I try to get like a range of sources from like multiple perspectives, like some that are from like one country and then maybe some from another country because i think that would give like a bigger range of perspectives that helps me build my argument excellent in fact if you're taking notes one thing i want to make sure you write down in order to score a six or seven and that's the highest mark you will need a range of sources to do well i recommend having a minimum of 10 sources and you want to try to use all 10 of those sources if possible very good uh let's go with um Let's go, uh, Jackie, how do you select your sources? Uh, yeah, similar to Lee Kwan, I, 
I like to find sources that have variety in them based on authors particularly, but uh, also like the ones that I feel like I have the most relevance to my topic, of course. One thing I love that you said is you said authors, right? Um, in order to do very well on this IA, you have to meet IB's rubric. And one of the things they want you to do is they want you to mention historic authors. They want you to kind of name drop. So for example, um, here's a book that I'm using for one of my other courses at LACC and it's Eric Foner. So if I'm going to cite something from this, they actually want me to say historian Eric Foner would argue, right? Uh, very good. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Let's go one more. Let's go with Daniel. How do you select your historical sources? Um, for me, because my story kind of goes, no, my question kind of goes over a lot of like, kind of goes over like a bit of history, like for across 30 years, I also try to look for as many times, like as many, as many from like our present day and how they reflect upon this. But I also go back in time and see what also happened at the time and how did they react to all of this. Excellent. So I think what you're getting at is you're looking at primary, secondary sources. If you want a six or a seven, you need to make sure that you are using a mix of primary and secondary sources. If you are only using one, uh, it's going to really hurt your score, right? So you've got to have a mix, okay? Uh, the second thing I want to make sure we go over is we need to use, we're going to be using these two terms called valuable and limited. What makes a source valuable and limited? Let's talk about limitation first. Uh, what does that mean if I'm saying this source is limited? Uh, Mark, what might that mean? Uh, I would think that if a source is limited, it doesn't cover all bases or like it's omitting something important. Okay. So you look at that perhaps did the source purposely omit something, right? And we're going to look at a source in a minute that yeah, you could argue that there might be some uh, parts that are omitted. Very good. Uh, let's go with uh, Wei Shen. How else might a source be limited? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Uh, how might a source be limited? Uh, like, I don't know, 10? So it's limited. I mean, think about that. If I'm saying that speech is very limited. Right. Because, oh. Right. If the constructor doesn't have any argument, you're I'll, right. I'll come back to you. Uh, let's yeah. go with uh, Jaylee. What do you think I mean by that? Um, I think when it's limited, it means like it might relate to your source or like your topic, but it doesn't really help you prove your argument. Okay. Like, not enough evidence. How, how might it not help you prove your argument? Um, if it either goes against what you're trying to argue or if there's not enough evidence that supports what you're trying to argue. So I, you're, I like what you're saying, but when we're talking about a specific source, if it's limited, what, I'm, what we're looking at this is how might it be biased, right? These are the terms that IB likes to use. Rather than biased, they'll say limited. Rather than significance, they'll say valuable, right? So um, I have all of these documents that I put into your uh, 2020 IA folder. I'm going to open them up. Uh, you need to make sure that you are very familiar with the term OPVCL. In AP, we use HIP, right? HIPPO. Uh, you cannot use it anymore. Uh, they're not going to score you for that, right? Um, the reason why I had Nelson Mandela in that first slide is because when we come back in the, you know, the beginning of the school year, we're actually going to get to us, our unit on rights and protests. And one of your tests is going to focus on South Africa and apartheid. And what you will need to do is you will need to analyze certain sources the same way that we did it in AP using um, historical context, right, intended audience, purpose, and point of view. What you will be using is the acronym OPVCL. I'm going to go through what this means right now. Um, so you, you need to make sure you understand this, okay? So let's see here. So let's get started right here. Uh, the first thing is, and I don't like the way that this looks because Microsoft Word uh, did not transition properly to the word doc, but it's okay. Um, so introduction, uh, Kaylin, can I have you just read the introduction for me? Sure thing. Introduction, part of the IB assessment in history deals with the document, document analysis. Students are expected to analyze primary and secondary sources for their origin, purpose, content, value, and limitation. These levels of analysis can be addressed through the following types of questions. Yeah. So uh, what you would literally need to do in your assessment, is, let's say if I give you a poster, 
you will need to tell me what the origin is, the purpose, and the content. Uh, what I want you to do right now is just read through the origin and purpose, right? And I'm going to ask some random people just overall, what is this, what, what each one is asking you to do. So I'll give you guys about a minute or so, read through origin purpose, and then I'll ask you. If you finish, go to content. All right, um, I, I want to make sure we get through this whole session. So I'm going to move kind of quickly here. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's go Dahlia. Uh, what do I mean by the origin and the purpose? Um, for origin, it's more of like who created it and when was it created and also published. Also for purpose, it's like why was it written and what was it used for? Yeah. Right now, I mean, the origin is the background information of the source. So, for example, if it's a uh, speech by President Obama, you would just literally say it's a speech by President Obama in 2008 as during the time of the recession, right? Uh, the purpose is you need to look at specifically the intent of the author. I want to make that clear, right? The intent of the author. So if it's a secondary source like this, Eric Foner, I would need to say that his intent is to basically to create a text for a high school audience or a collegiate audience, right? Uh, that we need to be clear with that. So we need to look at the purpose of the author. Um, content, what do I mean by content? Uh, let's go with uh, Joseph, what does that mean? Um, the content means like what's actually in the source and then also explain, need to explain like the historical context. So that means like the events that were happening at the time that are relevant to the source, I think. Yeah, right on. So what you would need to do is just tell me what exactly is in the content. Like if I'm looking at a chapter here in Eric Foner on the American Revolution, I need to figure out what key elements are related to my investigation. I need to state that explicitly. Uh, but also what was going on during the time if it was a primary source when it was written. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky, all right? And this is what you need to make sure uh, you do well because this is where a lot of students lose points. So pay very close attention. So value, what you will need to do with the value and limitation, you do not do these individually. So what I mean by that is for the origin, you will tell me the origin is, you will tell me what the purpose is, you will tell me what the content is, but what you will need to do with the value is, you will need to look at these questions and connect it to the origin, right? Uh, you will need to tell me the, um, value of the purpose, what's important about the purpose, as well as what's important about the content. Uh, so I want to go ahead and look at this part of the value. Paul, can you read that for us? <coughs> uh, just the whole thing? Yep, just the value part. How is the source useful in learning about the topic? Under what circumstances was the piece created and how does the piece reflect those circumstances? What can we tell about any controversies from the piece? Does the author present a particular side of the controversy or event? What can we tell about the author's perspectives from the piece? What was going on in history at the time the piece was created? And how does this piece accurately reflect it? So what you, we will need to do, thanks for reading that, Paul, is you're looking at this, is you're analyzing these circumstances, right? And you need to make the connection to the origin. So like, let's say, for example, if we're looking at Obama's, we'll look at Donald Trump's speech. And he's, let's say he's giving a speech right now. Why is knowing that Donald Trump, that he's the origin, what significance does that have? Why is that important, right? What does this tell us about his perspective? Uh, what, why is this important? What does this tell us about the pandemic, right? So we need to look at his point of view and the significance of that, right? Uh, what we will then also need to do is look at the purpose. What's valuable about the purpose? If the purpose of, um, let's say, uh, Hitler's Mein Kampf is to, uh, rally up the Nazi party uh, to overthrow the Weimar Republic, right? Why is that important for the purpose, right? The purpose is because he's using fight words or words of anger uh, to uh, motivate people to uh, tear down the Treaty of Versailles, right? So you need to look at the value of that. 
Does that make sense? I know it's a little bit confusing. We're going to do some practice with them to show you some examples. Any questions on that? If that makes sense, just type yes in the chat box. Okay. All right, very good. So next we got to look at the limitation. Okay. And I'll read this one to you guys. Uh, actually, no, Brandon, can you read that for us? Just the limitation. It's a limitation. What part of the story can we not tell from the document? How can we verify the content of the piece? Does this piece actually reflect anything from the something period, me period? Uh, what does the author leave out and why do they leave it out? What is purposely omitted, left out? Excellent. Very good. So what we would need to do here is limited. Once again, just like you do with value, you would need to also tell me what's a limitation of the origin. If let's say, um, you know, if it's Hitler's speech, why is that limited? Obviously, because he's biased and you would explain what bias he might have. The purpose, so the purpose is to manipulate or to uh, motivate a certain audience. Well, what's a limitation of that purpose? You might argue, well, because his speech is to rally up the Nazi party. The limitation might be is that he might be omitting certain pieces of information that might not necessarily be true to a vocation, right? Content. Um, if you're looking at a speech, what content perhaps is omitted and is false, right? If he argues and he says that, um, you know, just hypothetically speaking, that the Jewish population was responsible for the economic collapse of Germany during the time, and you have evidence that proves it's not true, then you would say that's a limitation to content, all right? Questions at all about that? So what I've done for you guys here, <coughs> um, so what you're going to do when you take your IB test, as well as you, when you're working on section one of your um, internal assessment, you have to read the documents first to determine the OPVCL. After uh, you complete, after when you're done, you need to complete the following sentence frames to answer an OPVCL. You will combine parts of the OPCVL in your analysis. For example, you must identify two values, two, milita two limitations that are successfully linked to the origin, purpose, or content. So in other words, what you need to be able to do is, after you tell me what the origin is, you need to give me a value and a limitation. After you tell me what the purpose is, you want to make sure you tell me a value and a limitation. And after you address what the content is, you need to make sure that you tell me a value and a limitation. So here's what I have here. Um, I have one ahead and I've given you guys, this is probably the most important part of this document. Um, and if you actually go into the 2020 IA file, it's not going to have this improper formatting. I've actually given you sets and starters to help you out. So for the value of the origin, because, for example, um, because uh, Hitler created the speech by Mein Kampf, actually, let me, one second, this framework is really not working well, guys, just because, uh, sorry, let me get to the actual document here. This would help. Uh, There we go. So this is a little bit better. I'm just gonna have to zoom in. Okay, so here. So these are the question starters that you wanna use. Because, um, give me the origin, right? Uh, let's say Hitler created the speech of uh, Mein Kampf. Uh, this would be useful to a historian studying and give me the topic and because we could learn this specific information, right? Give me the limitation. Right, same thing. The limitation because Hitler um, provided gave us a speech regarding Mein Kampf. This would be, you know, a limitation to historians studying the rise of Nazi Germany specifically because what is it that's limited about that origin? All right, uh, we'll, we're going to do some practice with this just to make sure. Does that make? Are you guys following me, or is this kind of confusing? Uh, Dahlia, what do you think? Does this make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, let's go, uh, Brian. Is this making sense to you? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it is. So we're going to do a practice here. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is this. Uh, let's say this is a an IA 20 years from now. All right. And my question is, uh, how significant was the Trump administration in the context of ending the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020, right? 
And this is our primary source. So we'll say that this is, this is part of a, even though this is CNBC, um, it's actually his speech that he gave yesterday. Okay? Um, so Paul, I'm gonna address your question in, right after we go through this. So what I want you to do is listen to this speech. And I want you to go ahead and type in the chat box. Tell me the origin, right? Tell me the purpose and then the content. But what I also want you to do with each one, right? Um, actually, you know, let's start off with that. Just tell me the origin, the purpose, and then the content. We'll start off with that, okay? So, and then I'll answer your questions, Mark and Paul. The median age of those who succumb to the China virus is 78 years old. Roughly half of all deaths have been individuals in nursing homes or long-term care. In one study, 90% of those hospitalized had underlying medical conditions, whether it's heart or diabetes, but usually it's uh, some kind of a condition. It seems that people have that, and if they do, it's a problem, no question about it. Young adults may often have mild or even no symptoms. They won't even know they're sick. They won't have any idea that they have a virus. They won't have any idea at all. America's youth will act responsibly, and we're asking everybody that when you are not able to socially distance, wear a mask, get a mask. Uh, whether you like the mask or not, uh, they have an impact, they'll have an effect, and we need everything we can get. Data shows children have the lowest fatality risk, 99.96% of all virus fatalities are in adults. Think of that. So that's uh, much, much, much less than 1% for children, young people. By understanding these risk profiles and learning how to treat the disease, we've been able to greatly reduce mortality in the United States. All right. That was very quick. Um, but what I'd like you to do is, based on that, go ahead and just type out for me what the origin is, the purpose is, and then the content. Don't worry about the value and limitations yet. We'll do those together. So go for it. The speech was given yesterday. Do we also do just the, the purpose? Oh uh, yeah, do uh, the purpose as well as do just do uh, the origin, the purpose, and the content. All three. I think the purpose is the hardest one. So if you're finished, uh, keep working, but if you're finished, what I want you to think about is think about the value and the limitations, but you need to make a specific connection to the origin, purpose, and content. So think about why is the origin important? Why is the purpose important? Why is the content important? Very good. All, everyone's got the origin correct. I think the purpose so far for the ones that have submitted. Most of them have been okay. Good 
Good job, Wei Quan. Good job. Jackie, excellent. Very good, Joseph. So Joseph, I want you to think about now the value and the limitation of each of those three that you wrote, origin, content, as well as the purpose. Uh, Wei Quan, I want you to be more specific with that statement because it's not entirely true. I mean, the purpose isn't, is he saying reopen schools specifically? Very good, very good. Well done, Brandon. Well done, Paul. Okay. Jaylee, good. Your origin is good. Uh, the, your purpose, I think, is actually focusing more on content. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Good. Daniel, I think your purpose and content's a little bit mixed up. Very good, Jackie. All right, uh, I do want to get through this already. If you haven't submitted what you have, uh, just go ahead and hit the enter button and then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, here we go. So let's get started with this. Uh, because, um, I'm just reading this. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna post uh, Jackie's because that was the last one I completely read. So, so, um, Really quick, so let's look at the origin. So if you said Donald uh, Trump's speech, you know, his, uh, yeah, he, his address that was made to the nation on um, July 22, 2020. Perfect, that would score you the point. But let me ask you this now, let's verbally go through this. What you would need to do is you need to tell me that origin, then afterwards what you need to tell me is a value, uh, value and a limitation of that origin. So <clears throat> I want you to think about this. Let's go with, uh, Let's go with Daniel. Daniel, why is it important? This is the value, and I want you to address it by saying valuable, because you need to make it explicit. Why is it valuable that the origin is Donald Trump, July 22, 2020? Why is that, why is that valuable? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, it's valuable because it marks the date in which the speech was given. So it sort of gives the idea of, you know, who the person is. It's valuable to know that it was Trump given on this day, because then you can make claims or you could bring in information that was from that time and before. So you know the, you know the context in which it was given. So on July 22nd, we have cases of COVID-19 happening. So you basically get like the general gist of what's happening like in that time period. Yeah. That was very good. Now, that was very wordy, but I'm going to help you out here. So even if you were to just say, uh, this is valuable, the date of July 22nd is valuable because there's been a spike in COVID cases during that time, right? That would score. That would be good enough. Uh, what about Donald Trump? Why is it valuable to know that he is the one that is giving the speech? Why would that be valuable, that he is the one that is giving the speech? Uh, let's go with, um, who have I called on yet today? Let's go with Brian. Why is it valuable that he, Donald Trump is the one that's giving the speech? Um, because he's the president. So he's like, I assume he's like the face of U.S. Yeah. So something that easy, right? Primary source, what we have right here. He's the, he's 
the leader of the United States, right? Uh, that's why that source is valuable. If you'd give a brief explanation why, I mean, of course, that he's the one that's making the executive decisions regarding the pandemic. Yeah, right? It becomes a little bit more difficult, Paul, uh, because I think this is the question that you were asking. If you're using a secondary source. So if I was using Eric Foner, for example, why is the origin of Eric Foner important? I might have to say Eric Foner is valuable because he's a world-renowned historian who's written numerous books uh, such as, and you name those books, or you might mention a little bit about his background, that he is a professor at Harvard University, specifically with a focus on American history. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research on some of your sources when you do that. Does that make sense? All right, so what would be a limitation of the origin, uh, that it's Donald Trump and that he wrote the speech or he presented the speech yesterday? What would be a limitation? Uh, let's go with Let's go with Danny. What would be a limitation? Limitation. What part of the story can we not tell? Him? I think a limitation would probably. Uh, uh, limitation. Let's see. Oh, I can, I can verify this. Uh, I mean, I want to say like the most obvious, which is like he's not really a physician. Like, I mean, he's he's a, he's a head. He's a president, of course, and he's like Jackie said, he needs to like ease the nation. Mm -hmm. because we're in a moment of like unrest but at the same time he's not a physician so he can he really can give the full details yeah. of the actual covid situation mm -hmm. he gives more brief like a brief superficial understanding of what's happening yeah and uh you know that'd be i think that'd be perfect i mean you're looking at this that he's a government leader and not necessarily a scientist or a doctor so therefore some of his information might not necessarily be factual right which he's been criticized during this time so that would definitely work uh, very good. Um, Kaylin, can you tell me what would be a limitation of that specific date, July 22, this one speech? Why is that limited? Well, I mean, first of all, because July 22nd was yesterday, well, actually, no, I was originally going to say that it's limited because the speech had just come out, but then I remembered you had placed the uh, scenario that this is an IA from 20 years in the future. So, in that case, the reason why the date is significant is because we have, first of all, because it's 2020, this is an election year, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Donald Trump is running for re-election re this fall. And a limitation of that is that, of course, he would want to make his last couple of months, there would be a motivation to make his last couple of months in office as appealing as possible so that he'd be able to get the support he would need to get re-elected. Yeah. Right. Right on. I think that's a very powerful statement. You're looking at the fact this is July 22, 2020. It's an election year. That some of this information due to the date might not necessarily be that accurate. Well done. Um, another thing, too, is we're looking at just this is specific date, July 22, right? We're describing this point in time of the pandemic, right? And if we're writing this IA 20 years from now, we, and let's say the pandemic were to go, I mean, God forbid that it doesn't, but let's say it goes until like 2021. Uh, the fact that this speech is only describing that specific point in the pandemic and not necessarily what happened before or after. So that's where it would be a little bit, a uh, little bit. Very good. Uh, purpose, purpose. So the purpose is, and Jackie, you said to ease national unrest in terms of COVID and demonstrate a unified administration to back the national implementation of masks, not forcibly, but stating that they are effective. Yeah, I think you're looking at the purpose of this is to ease national unrest. Very good. Um, what would be a I'll give you guys a choice, either a value or a limitation of the purpose. So what would be something that's valuable as well as limited regarding it? Who wants to give that one a try? Purpose is the one that kids always struggle with. So who thinks they could attack that one for us? Carolyn, you think you got it for us? Give me one value or limitation of the purpose. You there, Carolyn? Um, yeah. I guess, like, a value of the purpose would be, like, um, we're able to see, like, where the, I guess, president and his administration are, like, their values are, and then we can use, like, that to provide, like, added context to, like, whatever they did before, I guess. Okay. I see what you're saying. I think we'd have to be more clear with it in general, though. All right. What else would be a purpose? And, and you remember, you don't need to do, I'll go through this is 
if you're struggling with purpose, a value limitation of it, you could always do content, right? But what do you think? I think saying no. Brandon, want to give it a guess? Either a uh, limitation or a uh, value of it, of the purpose. Of the purpose? Uh... I mean, if his goal is, is to ease national unrest and to inform the general public of the state of the nation on July 22. So what would be a limitation or a value of it? I mean, as a government official, he would want them to wear masks. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't currently think of a limitation. Okay. In this, but for a value, um, let's see. I mean, it's uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, no, no problem. Don't worry about it. This one's a tough one. Daniel, go for it. Um, I'm going to go for a limitation here, but basically the fact that he's trying to basically ease national unrest and all of that, he would try and paint a different picture using, for example, the statistics he's seeing, seeing like, oh, it's not bad. The statistics are only affecting these set of sorts of people, not unlike the others, really. And so he point he tries to ease national unrest, but he but he does it through a very limited picture of what is really going on. Yeah. Very good. I think that's, 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 you look at the statistics, right? That he's, his purpose is to ease national unrest. However, he's doing this in a way that perhaps could paint a different picture regarding the, the statistics, right? Um, yeah, so that's what we're looking at for purpose is uh, you need to tell me the purpose of what is it that they're trying to do, the origin is, and why that might be valuable or limited. And that's tough to do for a secondary source. Right. So, for example, I'll have some people that will do a like a secondary source, like a textbook like this, and they'll say that their um, <clears throat> that their audience is, of course, a it's a college textbook. So they might say it's to educate a college audience. So in doing so, it might withhold certain information or it might not go that specific into it. Right. And that's I think that's it's 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 very weak to do for a secondary source. So I highly recommend it. You select primary sources when you're doing this activity. Uh, content, I'll just go over this just because we're running out of time. That's just whatever's stated in that speech, right? So you guys are telling me statistics. What you need to tell me is why that's valuable or that's limited, right? A limitation, you could say, is that these are national statistics, right? It doesn't necessarily paint into uh, or doesn't go in depth about different cities, right? I mean, what's going on in Los Angeles is completely different than what's going to be going on in Idaho, right? So that would be a limitation. A value of this, you could say, is that in some case that it does provide a national or a global picture of the United States during this time, right? And then you would explain why you think that's important. Any questions at all about this? Uh, no, you do not. So, and I'm going to go through this right now. You only need to do two. You only need to do two, right? And do your two best sources, right? Um, any questions at all about this? All right. So this is uh, what you will need to do for your, uh, Paul, so can, can both be like, yes, were you, and I'll go through this right now. So I'm gonna go through this and then I'll, I'll answer any questions. So what you will need to do for part A, and this is actually taken, I made an IB guide, actually, I'm not gonna lie, I went ahead and I altered an IB guide that was created by another teacher in Europe. And um, what I want you to do is, this is what you will need to do. You will, students will analyze two sources used in investigation. The two cho uh, chosen sources should be the most important two sources of investigation. Yes, pick your most uh, important sources. These sources should be mentioned in the essay. They have to be mentioned in the essay. And they're gonna look at this. They're gonna go through, in fact, when I graded ISIAs for IB, that was what took the longest times. I had to go, I had to confirm that I saw it in their bibliography, but I also saw it within the essay. So it needs to be in all spots. The sources can be either primary or secondary sources. I think primary sources are way easier to do. Both sources can be primary, both can be secondary, one can be primary, one can be secondary. Any combination is permitted. Uh, however, they should be the most important sources regardless if they are primary or secondary. The analysis must examine the value and limitation of each source while referencing the origin, purpose, and content, just like we did. So you will need to tell me the origin, the value and limitation of it, the purpose, the value and limitation of it, and then content, the value and limitation of it. What you also you need to do is a brief explanation of each source is included in the section, as well as relevance to the investigation. 
Students should give a description of each source that may include primary and secondary background, relevance, um, a brief summary of the source. Students will be provided examples to study to further understanding this requirement. So what you also need to do is you'd also need to tell me how the source is relevant to each, to your, to your question. So I would say, for example, this speech provided on July 22nd by Donald Trump is relevant specifically because he's addressing the pandemic at this stage, right? Students must clearly state the research question. You need to make sure you are using the exact words of the question. It needs to be there. Um, the question must be appropriate, and I'm working with you guys. I'm gonna, most of you guys, your question is set, it's good, but there's a couple things that we need to change just because um, I think that it might be too vague or too narrow. Um, and required length of investigation. A clearly focused research question is better than a broad one that tries to capture every aspect of the topic. For this section, it's only 500 words. If you go over, they're not gonna penalize you, but then that's less that you're gonna get, get later on, all right? Uh, remember, this is 2,200 words. So uh, if you go to 600, it's fine, but that's 100 less words that you could use anywhere else. Any questions at all about the requirements? Because I'm gonna go over how to score perfect on this. Questions? Um, any questions? Any questions, Jaylee? No, I'm fine. Good. Uh, Wei Quan, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Excellent. Very good. Uh, so I sent you guys this PowerPoint. I actually have the exact rubric here. Um, I'm going to click on this, though, because this is what a 7 would look like. So if you were to score, so this is actually out of, let me actually open this rubric. Ah. So if we open this rubric, and this is the actual rubric that I am going to give you guys feedback on. And I actually give you some pointers as well. So when you're doing your section A, um, look at this rubric. Right? I give you kind of sentence starters as well as um, what the, the order that you should do this in. All right, so this is worth six marks, six marks total, right? Um, I'll be honest with you, when I graded IA essays for IB, guess how many sixes I gave? Guess how many sixes I gave worldwide? A lot? Yeah, Mark, you're right. I have never seen a six out of six on this. I've seen a few fives. But uh, I don't know, I'd be just, they, they're very hesitant to give sixes. So that's not to say that you can't, but I think if you follow this framework here, it's gonna put you in that high score band of a five to a six, right? Um, but let me go in depth about just what, they, what this rubric means to score a five or six. So to get five or six points, here's what you will need to do. An appropriate question for the investigation has been clearly stated, right? I can help you with this, okay? Um, there's some of you guys that uh, what you did with your question is, even though I told you to redo your question, you just put down the same one. And if you've done your research, that's okay, because the research is going to stay the same. But at this point, we could go ahead and make some changes to these questions. Uh, so, for example, uh, Dahlia, can you uh, share for me what your question was? Yeah, hold on. Because um... I think your question was, your, your topic is perfect, but we just got to rephrase one element of it, and I'll tell you what it is. How successful was Emilio Aguinaldo in the context of gaining the Philippines' independence from the U.S. from 1899 to 1902? Very good. So her question is very specific. We have the years, right? And I recommend you all add years to your question. And we also look at Emilio Aguinaldo as whether or not how successful he was, right? So one of the things that Dolly and I are gonna talk about though is if we phrase that question where the content stays the same, but we know that Philippine independence failed, right? So what we would need to address perhaps is what role did he play in regards to the, of the Philippine revolution or the fight for independence, just so it adds a little bit more clarity to it. And that's, that goes for a lot of questions that we'll look at. Um, and as you, and I'm gonna meet with you guys individually and I'll talk about that a little bit later, all right? Um, so an appropriate question for get investigation has been clearly stated. The student has identified and selected appropriate and relevant sources. And there's a clear explanation of the relevance of the sources to the explanation, right? Is your IA the real deal? 
don't depend on Google. The, especially the ones that you're selecting for this. Remember, they're your two most important sources. Your two most important sources should be a scholarly source. It should not be an internet site, right? Uh, if it's a primary source that's on an internet site, that's a little bit different, right? Um, but we got to make sure that these sources are well done, right? Um, I mean, because I've had some kids in the past, they would do like um, a website and automatically I dock them. I, 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 I give them probably about a two because it's not well done. Um, as well as relevance investigation. You need to tell me why these sources are related to your question, right? Um, this is the one right here. I would make note of this that people always forget. They forget to make that relevance. There is a detailed analysis and evaluation, right? Don't just describe the sources. And a lot of kids do this. They'll just say the origin is, the purpose is, and then that's that. You will only score two to three points if you do that, right? Ah, here's the big part. Um, with so there's a detailed analysis and evaluation with explicit discussion of value and limitations. You have to use IB's terminology. You have to. If you state uh, the historical context of this or the point of view is, I mean, and you're using AP lingo, they're going to dock you, right? Uh, they want to do this as efficient as possible. And so if you make it explicit, it will be very clear. Um, with reference to the origin, purpose, and content, right? So the, what they're really looking you do is exactly what we did. Tell me what the origin is, the value limitation of it. Purpose, value limitation, and content, value limitation. If you do that with two sources, I promise you, you will get a five or a six. In fact, uh, the rubric here that... Uh, that we have. I recommend reading through this. This is a lot of information, all right? But if you look at part A, it gives you the chronological order that wish that you could do things. Uh, here it says, I want to make this clear though, guys. So when you look at this, just make a note, outline three sources you will be using, uh, which are not the two that we will evaluate in the moment. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to give you some options. You could go ahead and explain the two that you have if you want, right? If you want to explain how those two are relevant, you can. Right. In fact, I'm going to go back and just change that to make it more clear. Are there any questions at all about part A? Any questions? I emailed you guys a PowerPoint, right? This, this right here is an exemplar. This score is a five out of six, right? Five out of six. Um, I'm just going to call on someone right now and I want you to read this blue out loud and I want you to tell me why this is good, like why or not good, but why this would score this part, why this is a strength of the essay. Uh, let's go, Paul. Can you read that for us? So just the blue. This investigation will explore the question, to what extent did World War, World War II lead to women in the United States becoming permanent participants of the labor force? The years 1940 to 1950 will be the focus of this investigation to allow for an analysis of women's employment during the war as well as its evolution in the post-war period. All right. Uh, so let's go with, um, I mean, this is circle for a reason, right? And I'm going to say it's circle for a good reason. Uh, let's go with Carpenter. Why would this be circled? What is this circle, this, the part that's circle? What's, what's the strength of this? Because it's the purpose. Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, it says the purpose of Black Holder's book is to analyze the trends and yada yada. Or uh, just this, this blue part right here with that circle. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I don't to like actually so the reader knows what you're talking about or what you're answering. Yeah. You need to make explicitly clear what that question is, right? And what this person has done is they've actually given the, the years, which makes it very specific, right? You will notice what they go ahead and do is they give the first source, they give the second source, and the OPVCL is done very, very well on this. This is an exemplar. Um, the only point that they lose is I believe they don't explain the relevance of the sources. So that's why they get a five out of six, right? Five out of six. Um, but just, Paul, you, what you were asking, do we need to do research on the historian? If it's a secondary source, yeah. I mean, Blackwelder is a professor of history at Texas. 
specializing in modern U.S. and American women's history, and has written extensively on women's employment in scholarly journals and books, indicating that she is knowledgeable on this topic, right? So you will have to do some research on the author, if it's a secondary source. Questions? Also, um, a couple things that you also want to do is you want to try to stick with subject-specific vocabulary. Don't use things such as good source. Don't use things such as a long time ago or one-sided. I don't even want you to use terms such as author or decade or factual. Rather than using those terms, use the word historian, right? You, I, I went ahead and I put exemplars. You'll notice that once they get to the meat of the essay, they keep saying, you know, historian, um, Eric Boner, historian, um, David Kennedy. So those are things that you want to make sure that you're using, right? Uh, what I've done for you here, if you really want to get in depth, this is a uh, source from Cal State, and they actually use historic terminology, right? They've made a list of historical terms that you could use. So for example, um, if you're bringing up a historian that's just talking specifically about um, the economy during Nazi Germany, then what you would say is an economic determinist historian, right? It just sounds a little bit more intellectual to provide you um, those higher score bands, okay? Questions at all about that? All right, this page also goes ahead and it gives you some of these sentence starters that you could use. So if you're struggling with the sentence starters, use this, okay? All right, I wanna go through one thing and then we're gonna, so I'm gonna go about five minutes extra, okay? I, I apologize, but I think this is gonna help us differentiate a little bit. If you are, um, let's say you finish with part, so first off, if give me, just type down yes. If you understand part A, go ahead and just type yes or I understand in the chat box so I know we're all on the same page. All right, so remember two sources, 500, 600 words, right? Um, and I'll go over the due dates and everything. Now, let's say you are just, um, you want to get ahead. And in fact, right now, I look through your research sheets. Before you guys do your part A, I want you to continue to do more research. Before you do your part A, I want you to continue to do more research. I want you to continue to do more research. And I want you to continue to do more research. And here's the reason why. If you um, look at this rubric, because eventually we're going to get to the meat of the essay. And I'm just gonna look at the rubric right here, 13 to 15. In order for you to score the highest score band, and this is the majority of the points, right? For the meat of the essay, you're looking about 1100 words minimum here, right? 1100 words, I just wanted to make sure I had that right. 1300 words, yeah, 1300 words, apologize. What you need to make sure that you are doing here, to score a six or a seven is you need to make sure, number one, that the investigation is clear, coherent, effectively organized. Okay, but how this relates to your research is this. You need evidence from a range of sources and is effectively used to support the argument. What you also need is evaluation of different perspectives. What does that mean, evaluation of different perspectives? Because that's what a lot of people struggle with and AP doesn't have us do that. This is an IB thing. What does that mean? Mark, what does that mean, evaluation of different perspectives? Uh, I would say like getting different viewpoints and analyzing its relevance to your topic or like how it might be important to what you're talking about. Yeah. Very good. Uh, by different perspectives, what do we mean by that? Um, I would say like a wide range of sources. Some might disagree or agree. Yeah. Very good. So you're looking at different uh, sources of information. So like going back to our Trump essay, you know, 20 years from now, you might have some historians that would argue that, hey, his policies were a success. You might have others that would argue that it's a fail. And what you would need to do is evaluate those, right? And you would cite those names of the historians. So what you don't want is you don't want an essay that's geared towards one side. That's not what they, that's not what IB wants. What IB literally wants is they want an essay that you provided different perspectives and you're analyzing the strengths and the weaknesses of that by looking at the origin, the purpose, the values and limitations of that. So 
what you might want to start doing with your research is of like, let's say your research question going back to Dahlia's of Philippine independence and Emilio Aguinaldo and all of it is saying that he was a fail. What Dahlia might want to do is go ahead and find some research that maybe some historians will argue that there were some successes, right? Or perhaps independence wasn't necessarily his fault. Maybe there was other, or the failure was not his fault. Maybe there were other groups that were responsible for it. So continue to do your research, right? Continue to do your research because I want you to keep this rubric in mind. If you get ahead of the game and you finish your part A, you could go ahead and start your part B, which is the meat of the essay. And I could go ahead and I give, could give you some feedback on it, right? Uh, questions at all about that? Uh, Joseph, any questions? No? Yeah, very good. All right, so to sum things up, what I want you to do, um, first off, individual meetings. If, if you are struggling with your research questions, struggling with research, or even if you just want to go through your research, um, I'm open to meetings anytime. I mean, I'm not traveling anywhere, to be honest with you, or even if you want me to look through your part A, from now until the beginning of school, email me. Send me a time or a day that works for you. We'll make it happen. If I can't make it happen, we'll, we'll go through it. And literally what I'll have you do is I'll have you read through your essay and I'll tell you what you need to change for part A. If you get started at part B, go ahead and get started with part B, right? Um, but when we look at our calendar, guys, here is what we need to make sure where we're at. I've made some changes. So once again, you will find everything here. Um, if you want to look at some more exemplars, I put in three samples that scored a seven. Okay, that's going to help you. But let's take a look at our calendar. I pushed back some dates for you guys, uh, just because I want to. Um, I want you to make sure you have very good research. It all starts with that. So what I've actually went ahead and done is here we go. The first day of school, all right, uh, I want you to finish your part A. Have part A do the first day of school. That is what you need to have done. So from now until the first day of school, I want you to continue with your research sheets, right? <clears throat> I only got about research sheets from about two thirds of you. Uh, if you did not put in your research sheet, throw it in. I mean, you don't need to do it. Throw it in within the next week, week and a half or so, all right? That way I could have something to look at. Um, but just looking at it as a whole, I think us as a class, we need to make sure we're doing more research. Um, I am going to email some of you guys just to kind of revise your question a little bit to help you out. All right. Part B is going to be due um, probably, but we're looking at that last week of August. All right. Last week of August. Then we're going to work on part C. All right. And my goal is that whole first week of school, those first 10 days or so, we're going to work on it. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some feedback. All right. We're going to go through it together. Okay, uh, and then part C, that's our reflection. We'll go through that and the whole final product will be done. Questions at all about this? And, uh, give me some feedback. Does this make sense? Yes or no? And uh, just, if you could use your mic, that'd be great. Ken? Of course it makes sense. Of course it makes sense. <laughs> What struggles are you guys having? How could I support you? Be honest with me. Daniel, uh, Daniel, Magandi, how's everything going? What's, what, 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 what could I help you guys with your struggle, would you say? Um, I don't know. I feel like for me personally, last week was kind of hard for me because I had a lot of things planned out. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, so I'm just catching up. I okay. think everything's fine right now. Yeah, cool. Just like last week was like a struggle for me. Okay. But I think, I think like with the new additions or like the more time that you gave us, it's like going to be fine. Okay, very good. Um, excellent. Kaylin, how are you feeling? Thanks, Daniel. I'm feeling good. I wanted to say how, how appreciative probably we all are for you having taken all the time out of your summer to essentially, essentially have it open for uh, the meetings. And I'm pretty sure we'll be very appreciative for um, having that. Thank you. And thanks. And thanks. Thank you. Thank you for saying thank you for that. Cause it's, 
like it, it's um you know my, i was thinking about I'm like yeah wait a minute this is summer and i'm like i feel bad because i'm making you guys do this but at the same time i want you all to do so well on this because i think you guys academic you guys intellectually can score sixes and sevens on this and a lot of it is is just meeting the requirements of the rubric so the more we can knock out now the more feedback i could give you the better this is going to make next year so easy for us where like um i mean brian I, i'm working with brian on the ee and i would say like Brian, would you say it's been helpful when we literally read through every word together and I tell you what to change on the spot? Would you say so, Brian? Uh, yeah, I definitely say that. That helped a lot. So, and that's literally what I want to go through is I want to make sure that when I, when you're reading these to me, if I ask you a question, it's not necessarily to be like, to be, you know, a jerk about it. It's just because I know exactly what the IA uh, or the IA graders are going to be thinking. But also it's, just, it's like, it's uh, by me telling you, it's better than me writing it out because if I just write it, you, you might interpret it differently. Right. So that's all I have for you guys. Uh, we're at one Oh six email me, you know, like I said, if you want to meet, I have nothing going on the rest of the summer, except for playing with my dogs and uh, taking some history courses. Yeah. I'm a history nerd. I'm taking a full load at LACC in Pasadena right now. So, and I am getting A's. So that, that would be terrible if I failed history class right and yeah which i do have a story for you guys i mean i, I actually I'll, when we get back i'll tell you all about it how me and this one professor are constantly arguing with each other every day so um and that'll be a story for historiography when we talk about your ia when you return to school right all right guys well that's it i don't want to hold up hold you up anymore shoot me an email questions anything but enjoy the rest of your summer um and yeah i'll see you guys uh, virtually august 18th all right. See you all. Uh, Later.